Hey everyone, welcome back to But Why the Podcast, the podcast where every week me, Kate, Adrian, and Matt talk about the things in pop culture that people say matter and ask the question, but why though? Before we get started, make sure you head on over to iTunes and rate, review, and subscribe to us. It is the easiest way to help us out and help people find us. And if you want to help us a little bit more, go ahead and head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash but why though PC. And as always, thank you so much for your support just by listening to this episode. And uh, yeah, enjoy the show. smell what the rock is cooking because we do we're talking about Dwayne the rock johnson today and i'm your host kate and i'm here with adrian hey how's it going and matt hello so we here at but why though have an amazing announcement to make um as you know if you've been following us we have been trying to really hard to build a community through our website but why though podcast.com and we've had such a great response with uh writers and people interacting with us on social media um but we're taking the next step and we've actually added another uh another podcast that none of us are on to the community and it's so here's what happened it is a podcast released once a month hosted by nisha and carolyn two amazing people people where they talk about all the pop culture they've interacted with so like any anime they watch books they've read movies they've gone to shows they've binged everything and anything for the month um and they also give some recommendations so it's a really great show guys let's give them a warm welcome welcome i'm glad to be international since i know you're from canada (laughs) yay we're we're making moves i know i'm super excited to have you guys um if you don't follow them on twitter you should because they tweet straight fire and lots of memes and i'm super excited to see you know their growth and everything and i'm glad we can be a part of it and if there's anything we can do just let us know yep excited i just knew they were from canada or at least one (laughs) of them is i like canadians canadians are amazing anyway uh no yeah we're glad to have you Matt, Matt's not the bubbly one of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, make sure you check them out on Twitter. I will link everything um, within our site into their Twitters in the show notes. Give them a listen. Give them a follow. They're great. Um, and as Adrian said, they do tweet straight fire, fire. Like those Expanse live tweets from Carolyn and, oh, the memes from Nisha. She yeah. tweeted one the other day, and I- I'm surprised I'm here. I thought I died. <laughs> Hi there. Have you ever found yourself scrolling aimlessly through the long list of films and and television shows available on Netflix? Have you been trying to think of a book that you can start reading or maybe even a comic that might interest you? Is there possibly a podcast where people discuss these things? Well, guess what? You found it. My name is Carolyn. And I'm Nisha. And together we host So Here's What Happened a podcast where we come together to review and recommend the pop culture that we've watched and read throughout the month. From fluffy romance novels and rom-coms to gritty comics and dark action-packed anime, we get into it and we do not hold back. Subscribe for new episodes and follow us on Twitter at SHWH underscore pod to be a part of the So Here's What Happened community too. We want to hear from you guys. So Here's What Happened is a proud member of the But Why Though podcast community. And since Adrian is our wrestling, like, I don't know, aficionado, he will be leading this episode. Yeah, so we're talking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson today, and full disclosure, he might just be coming off of our Tolkien episode, uh, so I have to follow that up, which is fun, and, <laughs> you know, all the amazing stuff Tolkien did, so don't expect, you know, a discovering of genre of words, although... Dwayne the Brock Johnson is the reason why SmackDown is in the English dictionary. Uh, so what? take that, Tolkien. 
Well, we'll start off as we usually do with our intro question. And today, just because he's had so many roles and so many movies, um, and he's done so much stuff, we'll just start off with like, what's your favorite and least favorite role The Rock is in, including kind of like you know his persona as you know The Rock. Uh, Kate. Uh, so can I have a tie? Sure, go for it. Okay, so my favorite two are Gridiron Gang and The Tooth Fairy. Good choices. Those are my favorite two. Um, Gridiron Gang, and in both of them for like pretty much the same reason, like the paternal, like soft side that he shows in them, but also in Gridiron Gang, like the fact that that was a story that spoke to him from like his own upbringing. Um, like that was probably like. It's still one of my, like, really favorite, like, movies, or I guess, like, you know, that that genre of, like, yeah, inspirational yeah. adult saves kids film, um, that's probably, like, up there with Stand and Deliver for me. So, uh, yeah, those that are my two favorites. That is super high praise for Gridiron Gang, and I like it. Yeah, it's, it's really great. Um, and then, I guess my least favorite rock role? Um... Yeah, I guess. Adrian's gonna kill me for this, but I think Habs. Oh, really? We're yeah. done. Stop it here, everybody. <laughs> well, like I hate it because like it's not like that balanced personality that I love about him. It's just like mean Dwayne. Hey, hey, he has a kid in that. Like his kids in that one too. Like he, for a second. They like, say, "Dad's got to go save the world," and he flexes out of a cast. For a second. For a second, Adrian. <laughs> and he's in the other one too for like a second. He said she's not, he coaches Two seconds. Her, he coaches her soccer her soccer team. He, he's he's all yeah. That was it. adorable. <laughs> that that is my favorite Hobbs moment. It was really adorable. Yeah. Super good. Uh, what um, about, but yeah. Yeah. What about you, Matt? As far as my favorite, I probably he's been in quite a few, but I probably go with probably between Walking Tall and Jumanji. Nice. Good choices. Even though Walking Tall is not the greatest movie, but it does pretty decent. And as far as my least favorite role, The Tooth Fairy. No! <laughs> Terrible movie. It is a like good, awful. heartfelt movie. I don't care. Movie's awful. <laughs> and is there another one where he plays a dad? There's a lot where he plays a yeah, dad. Yeah, he plays a dad pretty often, actually. What's the one where he, like, finds a random kid? Uh, Game Plan. Oh, like yeah. the, that, one that one's awful. really bad. That one's awful. really bad, actually. That is my worst. I couldn't remember what the heck the name of one. That one was yeah, terrible. The game, the game plan. Yeah, Another I actually one. don't like that you, one. That one has a bulldog in it, and he's super cute. Even a bulldog couldn't save that movie. <laughs> and I bulldogs think. can save, like, almost anything. I haven't seen the movie in years, so I don't... I mean, I remember liking it when I watched oh, it. Oh, no, no, no. I, I need to redo this. My least favorite uh, rock role is The Scorpion King movie because that thing was ass <laughs> he, he rolled to the bank with 5.5 million dollars for that movie damn uh, yeah yeah uh, so it's kind of a hard one to go with some of these no nah, I, I like i like the way back because my, my tall and jumanji which is highly highly underrated oh dear yeah. lord he has been in so many movies yeah you didn't know that yeah that's why it was hard to pick, like, my favorite one. Yeah. Oh, Doom is actually... Re- I'm probably one of the only people on the planet that, like... I like movie. Doom oh as, like, gosh. a video game movie. It's super underrated. Yeah. And I think he's I think he's fine. He's the character he needs to play in that one. By the way, Get Smart was totally trash at the end. It was oh. trash at the end. I don't uh, even remember the end. Um, but for me, my favorite would probably have to be Gridiron Gang... Um, I think number one and then number two is kind of like a toss up it's, it's kind of like he's kind of good in just about everything else um, <laughs> I like the rundown I like Walking Tall the uh, rundown pretty much in Walking Tall I feel like are the same movie. I yeah. get those two movies confused I get those confused all the time and I've seen them both like multiple multiple times and then he <laughs> uses the same costume from that in Jumanji <laughs> yeah I really like him in Jumanji like that movie is super underrated like if you're listening it to this episode is. and you haven't seen Jumanji go see it it's just a lot funnier and a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I uh, think if they really changed the title of that movie, it'd be a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, uh, did we count the Moana thing? Oh, Because that movie's amazing, but yeah. I didn't know if we were counting voiceovers or just actors. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moana counts. Actors count because he, like, lived being Maui on all of those press tours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's why I put Maui in the poll, because he, okay. I think it's definitely... Yeah. He's that oh, so definitely I probably need to change mine, because yes. I probably like Moana better than, like, Walking Tall yeah. and Rundown. Moana's so good. 
I think I, it's I think it's like Gridiron Gang, Moana, Tooth Fairy. But they're all pretty good for me. My least favorite. I kind of like the Tooth Fairy. I think Tooth Fairy was a bad of a movie. I also didn't think game plan was a bit. Basically, like anything with The Rock, I kind of like. With the exception of his persona in WWE, I hated The Rock as a kid. Ah. Uh, mainly because I was a Stone Cold Steve Austin fan, and his big feud when he, you know, one of his <laughs> biggest feuds was the was uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then when he made a reappearance in the early 2010s, his biggest feud was with John Cena, who's like my other favorite wrestler. So like, whenever he's in there, I hate him. Just, I, I hate, I hate his catchphrases. <laughs> but who hate. really won between uh, Austin and The Rock? Uh, it was kind of like one of like the Pass and the Torches kind of things. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess The Rock kind of won, technically. Does anybody even know where Austin is? He makes appearances every now and again. Like, uh, two years, like two years ago, The Rock, uh, Stone Cold, and like Hulk Hogan, like were all in the ring at the same time for like one of the WrestleManias, and it was a pretty good moment. They all like drank beer together, like the old times, you know, the the back in the day days. No, but I really like The Rock um, as an actor and as a person. He's super, super good. Like He's like one of the most genuine people, I think, on the planet, and that's why we're covering him today. Um, and because he beat out my man Vinny Diesel in our poll. So this is for <laughs> you, people who voted for The Rock on our poll. All right, so we'll go through kind of like a brief history, kind of like of his life and stuff. Um, since like the story's kind of still being written on The Rock, we'll kind of go through some stuff really quick and then save kind of like his... Um, acting career kind of more in depth and his professional wrestling career more in depth kind of like in the but why those because he's a super big staple in those but hopefully like through this some of this background you get some like more insight and kind of like the life of the rock before he's kind of like this big huge you know movie star slash do you smell what the rock is kicking guy (laughs) so Dwayne douglas johnson was born in hayward california on may 2nd Uh, So he just celebrated a birthday not too long ago. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Rock. In 1972, making him 46, which when I read this made me want to go to the gym for 20 years and, like, not come out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that man's thigh is bigger than me as a person. The dude legit ages backwards. Like, if you go look at his, like, the turtleneck picture, like, his the famous, you know, Mimi turtle. Yeah, and, like, look at him now, like, you would think that the fanny pack pictures him at 46, but it's not. You know what it is? Taking off the hair made him look younger. Yeah, and then he just like dedicated himself to getting jacked when he stopped, like when he wasn't in uh, WWE or WWF anymore. Like he just had time to get super jacked and then be in Jack the Guy roles. Um, so his family lineage is kind of like ingrained in wrestling, so it's really like no surprise that he kind of got into that life eventually. So his father is Rocky Johnson, who is Nova Scotian. Uh, are from Nova Scotia? No, yeah, Nova Scotian. Um, and he was a pro wrestling back in the day with the NWA or the National Wrestling Alliance. For those of you who listened to our professional wrestling episode, that's kind of one of the big um, wrestling promotions before WWF and before WCW. His mother, uh, Ada Johnson, is Samoan, um, and both of her parents, um, High Chief Peter Mie. Me, I always mispronounce this. Maivia? My, yes, Maivia. And Liam Maivia were also in the professional wrestling industry. So The Rock's uh, maternal grandfather was a pro wrestler, and his maternal grandmother was also one of the first, um, kind of really one of the only female wrestling promoters for a very long time. Damn. Yeah. So he's kind of been in it forever. And because The Rock... So this is a little complicated just because they're not blood-related, but... The Rock's grandfather, Peter, was blood brothers with one of the members of the... I'm going to let Kate pronounce this so I can... Anoa'i? Yeah. Uh, Anoa'i wrestling family, um, which makes a lot of professional wrestlers Rock's cousins slash uncles, but not by blood, but through, like, this Samoan, you know, cultural aspect. So people like Umaga, um, Rikishi, the Usos, Nia Jax, Roman Reigns... Um, are all related to The Rock through Samoan culture. So he has lots of ties to it, so it's no you know, real it's a real, no real surprise that he got into it eventually, but we'll kind of get into that here in a second. That's really cool, kind of like how like Mexicans call every bo- everybody Tia and Theo, even though like, they're yeah, totally exactly. not related to you. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, so yeah, so contrary to popular belief, um, The Rock like just didn't come out the womb. The Rock and then like was you know telling people he was gonna lay the SmackDown on him. Um, he kind of had kind of a rough childhood that Kate's mentioned a little bit at the beginning, and then we'll get into a little bit later on. But he moved around a lot as a kid. He said he resented his dad for making them move so much. He said he moved like 13 times during his childhood. Uh, he lived briefly in New Zealand, moved to Connecticut for a little bit during his elementary and middle school years, moved to Hawaii for a lot of his um, early teens, and then finally moved to Pennsylvania to finish school. Uh, he's very open that his family struggled a lot when he was younger. While they were in Hawaii, the Rock used to like rob stores, was like part of a gang, because their this family was um, very poor and they were struggling to kind of meet to make ends meet. And they were, you know, had cars we possess, were basically evicted. And he said that he never wanted to see his mother in that position ever again and began to put a lot of work, kind of kind of like the blue collar way of kind of making sure that he did everything he could to put his family in a better position than where they were at when he was, you know, 14, 15. Um, and some of that spawned when he started playing football more seriously in high school. Uh, he was obviously like you see the Rockies, you know, six five, you know, over two fifty, so Naturally, if he has you know a little bit of the skill, he he can play really great at just about anything he puts his mind to. So he played D tackle um, at the University of Miami on full scholarship and was actually part of the 1991 national championship team, which was full of just amazing stud NFL players. Yes. That, yeah, and I was gonna let Matt talk a little bit about that team <laughs> to kind of put it into perspective. Like he got a full ride scholarship to go play at that school specifically. So, I mean, he obviously, I think he was a freshman in 91 Yeah, or he was like a freshman. When, when they won that thing. But he ended up getting, the funny thing about that whole story is who repl- who eventually replaced him after yeah. his injury, which is Warren Sapp, which is just like NFL, like Hall of Famer Warren Sapp and not crazy post-NFL career Warren Sapp. <laughs> 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 not wrong. Yeah. I mean, he also played with like Michael Barrow, Jesse Armstrong, I mean, or Armstead, my bad, uh, Gino Toretto. I believe is what is the quarterback thing? Yeah, they. I mean, they basically there was so many basically future NFL players from the basically his two to three. I think it was a was he there four years? I thought it was maybe. Three. I think it was, I think it was three to four. Um, yeah, but he he played with you know everybody at like the U that we kind of like know to be you know stud players. If not for like his injuries, he probably would have just went into the NFL automatically. Um, but he struggled with injuries kind of when he was in high school, and then they, they kind of plagued him while he was at the University of Miami. And like Matt said, he got replaced by Warren Sapp, who ended up being, you know, Hall of Fame defensive tackle. But and Hall of Fame nutcase when he retired. Yeah, basically. Uh, Question. Yeah. A little bit to go back to like what we were talking about just because of his dad. I thought Rocky Johnson was like famous for something or like a famous wrestler. Yeah, he's a wrestler. Yeah. Did I mention there was another Rocky Johnson? Um, or was wrestling just not like lucrative at this time? Uh, it just wasn't as you know, like as we kind of talked about like these smaller promotions was kind of one of the reasons like why he moved around so much. Oh, and the gotcha. NWA kind of phases out, you know, in in the okay. '80s, kind of like while he's at the age of getting ready to kind of you know um, okay. be an adult and stuff. So. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, because I just thought his dad, like, did something in yeah. wrestling that was amazing, but I, I, I don't know. No, yeah, he's, like, you know, he was, like, one of, um, you know, the first main, um, you know, black wrestlers back in the day. Oh, but he spent okay. a lot of time with, like, his mom, and it was kind of, like, just him and his mom for a gotcha. long time. Um, okay. Which, like, then, made things okay. a little rough, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for co- uh, contextualizing that, because I was like, wait, wrestler money but it's yeah, also yeah. like this is 2018 wrestler money <laughs> yeah exactly not 19 <laughs> yeah, yeah. whatever's learning <laughs> yeah so he eventually despite like his injuries and things like that he eventually did graduate with his bachelor's degree in criminology and um physiology oh, wow. physi- which i did not know i didn't know that he that's he, really cool that he finished yeah. it out it those are like two hard he was... degrees that's why I'm he's so good in sent on that book <laughs> Huh? That's why he's well, so good in central intelligence. No, well, criminology is actually a pretty hard degree. Physiology, I would assume, is a hard degree. Cause it's physiology, like I would say yes. Criminology, I don't know as much. 
Yeah. Angel Intelligence is a really good movie, and I love him with Kevin Hart, and I don't know if it's just because he's so big and he's so small that it just is amazing. Yes, I love is... Central Intelligence. So the problem is, uh, also I slept would have put that on there, but I don't. I have not seen it. So. It's good. You need to watch it. It's, it's so good. good. It's one of those underrated. I to see it and never got around to it. Yeah, it's really good. Especially because uh, he plays like this. To- he was like the kid that got picked on in high yeah. school, and like he's he wears jorts and like it, it's it's awesome. I love him. I love you, Rock. <laughs> so after his time at the University of Miami, he actually went to go play for the Calgary Stampeders in the CFL, but was cut two months into the season, and he left with seven bucks in his wallet, which we'll get to wow. a little bit a little, little bit later on. Um, but it was a really bad time for him. Like, even the coach even called him back a little bit later. Um, and he suffered from, like, some real bad depression for being, being in this spot, which we'll get to into one of the but why those. Um, but he was, like, almost – he got a call from the coach to come back. But he said, no, I don't want to do it. And then asked his dad to kind of, kind of mentor him in being a professional wrestler, despite his dad saying it's going to be, like, the worst decision he ever did. Um, wow. But he stuck with it and followed his kind of – professional wrestling heritage of his grandfather his father his um grandmother and kind of all of his um you know samoan family and well like i said we'll get into kind of like a little bit more detailed later on but he was active more or less from 1996 to 2004 the early 2000s are a little wonky because he kind of took breaks to go film all of the movies and stuff but he was still pretty active and now he kind of just makes part-time appearances every now and again so he's not uh, he's still like i'm pretty sure he's still getting paid through um wwe because he shows up every now and again is that like a typical like i guess pro wrestler career because it seems really short especially since like his acting career takes off yeah i mean it's pretty i think it's a pretty long professional wrestling career to be honest when you okay. think of people who've kind of done it for a long time there's not really very many who are able to kind of withstand one like the lifestyle and then two being able to do it and still kind of be like in favor for so long yeah Uh, so the fact that he did it from 96 to 2004 at like a very like high level and everybody loved him i mean he only went away because he was getting paid more doing movies yeah um but even when he comes back, like he still is still super loved. So I think he had okay. one like one of the best careers in like that short amount of time that, of of anybody. Okay. So in the early two thousands, he start or I, I would say like the late nineties, he starts doing acting, and one of his first roles outside of professional wrestling, because I count you know professional wrestling is kind of like the acting part of of his life too. Um, he actually played his father in that seventy show. Oh, he wow. played, yeah, he actually played Rocky Johnson in it, and it's pretty good. Um, I don't know how many people know this because I don't know how many people watch Star Trek Voyager, but he actually had a role in Voyager as like a wrestler, and he uh, fought Seven of Nine, um, the the female cyborg lady, and he like legit hits her with like a rock bottom like in the episode, <laughs> and they like they play like a version of his of his like walking music. It's actually super surreal. Um, and he basically just plays the rock with like some makeup on his head and like in a singlet, <laughs> essentially. Um, That's cool. I so, need to look up that clip now. Yeah. So basically, and then he had um, he did Saturday Saturday Night Live um, in 2000, and he basically just brought in a bunch of like the WWE people, and they kind of had like a made fun of like wrestling and things like that. So he essentially just used his pro wrestling kind of um, fame and his persona to get his leg in the door through acting. Yeah. Um, and his first big role, as we mentioned earlier, um, is actually in The Mummy Returns in 2001, where he plays the Scorpion King, kind of CGI, kind of, sort of. I don't then, remember him actually in that movie. He's at the very end. The, he's the been very, there for very like end. a minute. Okay, that's yeah. what I was saying. I was like, I remember The Mummy Returns, but I do not remember him. It's a minute. Yeah, he's like a big CGI Scorpion thing, and he does like the eyebrow raise in it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's very The Rock, like circa 2001. It's smoldering. <laughs> yeah. And then he would obviously reprise his role, as we mentioned, in The Scorpion King, where he made Bank. Uh, it which was is probably, awful. Which is probably why he didn't go back to um, WWE, like, or WWF at the time, um, too heavily, because he's making, you know, millions of dollars doing yeah. movies like The Scorpion King. We actually made pretty decent money from when I was looking at, because I, I was thinking, looking at, like, all of, like, the great movies he's in, he's in now, I was like, The Scorpion King must have been terrible, but it actually made... A decent profit for like. Everybody the went time. in there and set their money on fire and. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much what that experience was. 
and so, kind of the rest is kind of history after that. So according to IMDb, he has 150 acting credits between movies, TV, and video games, and also has 150 or 105. 105, yeah, 105. <laughs> 150 by the time he's done. Ah. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. There's 49 uh, <laughs> of them being Fast and the Furious. Exactly. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, yeah, so 105 acting credits on IMDb, and he actually has 31 producer credits on what are some IMDb. What he's produced? Um, let me pull it back up. Oh, I have IMDb open. Okay, oh, yes. Apples. Say apples. Yes. He is the executive producer on Black Adam. Producer... Jumanji 2, producer of Shazam's, uh, pr- executive producer of Rampage, executive producer on Jumanji, executive producer on Baywatch. I saw Baywatch. Baywatch, that movie isn't that bad. It's actually hilarious. It's a yeah, it's giant hot mess, but it's a good hot mess. Yeah, it's not that bad. And a uh, lot of these producer credits are really attributed to um, the production company that he does a lot of his movies through now. Uh, uh, okay. It's actually, let me scroll down to my, my fun facts. Uh, he does, a lot of his production is through Seven Bucks Productions that he has with his ex-wife, Danny Garcia, um, that he's been working through. And they produce, you know, his TV show Ballers and Baywatch and things like that. And the Seven Bucks production is actually a, like a harken back to the time when he left the Calgary Stampeders with Seven Bucks in his, in his wallet. That's cool. Yeah, so it makes sense why he has so much production credits yeah. recently. And it also seems like, at least, like, I don't know, he's wrestling to get his foot in the door and then just broke that entire door down. Yeah, no, he, he really, really did. Um, but before that, he kind of breaks down the, the door of WWE, um, or WWF. I, I'm going to get them confused this whole time. There's too many dang acronyms, and they've changed their name way too many times. Um, but we'll get into some of the why those to kind of talk about some of this stuff of kind of, you know, how he's become such a big action star and kind of what he's been doing with all of this fame and all this buku bucks that he is getting on the yearly now. So the first one, we'll talk about his professional wrestling career, professional wrestling career. And even though I hate him as The Rock and I still think old cold Steve Austin is better, uh, he's definitely one of like one of I would say probably like the top 10 professional wrestlers of all time. Um, mainly because his career was so short and because of all of the hype that he kind of created around himself. So he made his debut in WWF. He did some like other promotions before that, but his main kind of, in kind of like the big leagues, you know, bunny quotes, is in the WWF in 1996 where he um, comes in with the name Rocky Mieva, which is obviously a, a harken back to his father and then his um, grandparents. Um, and he did this at the start of the Attitude Era, and if you remember back to our WWE, our professional wrestling episode, we talked about the Attitude Era of being one of like the best times in professional wrestling and kind of saved the WWF and kind of brought the controversies and all that stuff into kind of like the mainstream after kind of like the 80s Coke fiesta and everything like that. The late 90s kind of brings professional wrestling back into a better light, more or less. And The Rock is really kind of at the center of at a lot of that. So he started out as a babyface, which is professional wrestling terms at, for the good guy. And he actually got a lot of hate for it, so much so that he had like a heel turn, which is basically turning to the bad guy in 1997 when he joined the Nation of Do- Domination as The Rock. The Nation of Domination. These names, Adrian. The Nation of Domination is actually like one of like the first um, like all black groups, and they were pretty dope. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it so come up with a better name though. Yes, yeah, it is a it is a name. <laughs> hey, the nation of domination. They dominated people. Um, sure. So, <laughs> so, and at this time is kind of when he starts his, his feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which is kind of one of, when I think is like one of the best feuds of all time. You kind of have like not the older Stone Cold Steve Austin, but kind of like the current face of the company going against kind of the kind of up and coming face of the company, and they have a lot of rate. Great feuds. So without going too much into kind of like all the feuds that he has, because he has feuds with, you know, the McMahons and the Triple H's and things like that. Um, basically, like long story short, he becomes one of the biggest stars of the company. And so much so that he's like the people's champion. Um, and a lot of this comes from, I think, uh, mainly because of his acting ability. He kind of has this kind of swagger and knows how to work a crowd. He cut amazing promos with kind of his eyebrow raising and his 
Um, do you smell what the Rock is cooking? Um, again, he's athletic as hell, like two six five over two fifty. He knew how to sell his moves. He knew how to sell other wrestlers' moves. Meaning, like he knew how to make it look entertaining and legit. Um, so he was really good to work with because he would sell the hell out of moves. Like if you look, if you go back and look at like. Um, if you go YouTube, like the rock reaction to like WWE moves, he sells them really well. He's not a selfish performer. So um, it helped him kind of have lots of feuds with lots of people and it worked really, really well. And he had some of the best one liners of all of all time. You know, he was the people's champ. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Um, you know, Jabroni Avenue, kind of everything under the <laughs> sun. Uh, there's so much stuff. Um, and I don't think anyone has had that kind of success that quickly or kind of, like, maintains that success that quickly, where, like, he was hated at the beginning, but he's just, like, naturally loved, basically, through the rest of his career. Do you know um, what the best part of all this is, though? What? With the side note of, as you said, he was athletic as hell, and he's six, what, two, 250, right? 6'5". Six, 6'5", five. Six, five, 250. That is a giant of a man. Which is yeah, great, huge. because why the BMI is so terrible, because according to that rating, he is obese. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Even yeah. though, like, he's jacked. Yeah. Super jacked. <laughs> and, like, he's healthy. Yeah. yeah Do and not he eats follow like, BMI, anybody. Yeah, and he eats, like, 10,000 calories a day. Like, it's Science ridiculous. Facts with Matt. <laughs> so, after he stops, like, professional wrestling full-time, he's, like I said, he still makes sporadic appearances to the WWE. And he's usually met with pretty great support. Like, when his music drops and it's, like, a surprise, um, he gets a huge pop and the crowd goes nuts. Um, one of his biggest returns was in 2011 through 2013, where he feuded with John Cena in like the PG era. Um, WWE at this time was as it was like more or less at a decline because fans didn't like the direction they were going with more PG, more family friendly. So they brought in The Rock to feud with John Cena. So like the old People's Champion versus um, you know this the new face of the company, and it brought old fans back into WWE, and it brought like fans of his movies up to that point back into WWE. So they saw you know a, a slight increase during that time of when The Rock was there. Um, I don't, I didn't put the the numbers in here, but I think the episode the episode that he came on for that Raw um, was like one of the highest rated of the year. Um, I think 7 million people or something like that tuned in to just his promo alone um, during that episode. So wow. it brought in a whole bunch. So now he's, like I said, he kind of shows up every now and again. A couple of years ago, he showed up with um, Ronda Rousey and they cut a nice little kind of thing to kind of hint at her entering into the WWE later on. Um, he's shown up with, like I said, with Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan um, now his last couple of ones have been him trying to get his cousin Roman Reigns to go over, meaning you know for the fans to like him, but it's not working because people still hate him probably more than they hate John Cena. So um, his last couple of appearances haven't been super good. Like they were excited to see him, but they knew why he was there, so they're like, oh, okay, now you're just here to, like promote Roman Reigns, and we're not super happy about it. Wait, people hate John Cena? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. The fandom hates John Cena. Why? Because they can see him. Because he's because wrestling fans, especially older wrestling fans, only like the heels, meaning like the bad guys. Oh, and, and John Cena has like never been a heel. He's an eternal good guy. He's like an eternal good guy, and they don't like him, despite all of the amazing stuff he does outside, inside, and outside of the ring. Everybody still hates him. Yeah, I was about to ask, uh, mostly because of like, see, like the only person that I think I know as much as The Rock are kind of like put on the same thing as John Cena. Like he's he's about to be in the Transformers movie. He's been in a few other movies. He hosted yeah. uh, American Grit, which was like a competition show. Like he's like out there doing stuff. He has that friendly face. Like yeah, that's he's kind of that's... genuinely humble and good person. Yeah, exactly. I'm, like he's like The Rock. Did The Rock like blaze this path for him? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, like, Hulk Hogan tried it, like, back in the 80s. But, I mean, if you look at, like, the Hulk Hogan tried it, I think the only ones who were even successful at kind of that transition Kane have... Kane was in a movie. Kane was... Once. Kane... A lot of these wrestlers... Evil. <laughs> a lot, a lot <laughs> of these wrestlers Awful. have been in lots of, like, B and C movies. Um, I mean, The Rock tried... I mean, uh, Hulk Hogan tried it. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin tried it. And obviously, like, that stuff doesn't pan out. So I think the only ones who are really successful are going to be, like, The Rock... And now Batista, 
I was like, who's going to yeah. be more successful, Batista, Batista or The Rock eventually? Yeah. Oh, The Rock, obviously. I, he makes way he more money. He has more movies. More movies. Um, yeah, but but I think John Cena is though. in that point. Huh? Batista's just starting, though. Oh, yeah, Batista is kind of just starting. Well, he, he's been in a lot of B movies, a lot of C movies. Oh, well, John, he's just the Rock. The Rock kind of got into it and made $5 million off his first movie. Yeah, that's true. Also, uh, I will say this, though. Go support Artemis Hotel with Batista in it. How about yeah. we see the movie <laughs> first? <laughs> I'm gonna say go so su- so support it because it looks amazing. That cast is yeah, the cast on good. fire. And Batista's so. in it. I don't know how much we'll see him. Like I don't know, like if he's just gonna stand there the whole time when he's gonna be invisible. But <laughs> we're gonna try it out. Um, but yeah, but I think you're right, Kate. Like I think John Cena is at the point in his career because he had a much longer career than um, The Rock did. I think he's like in his 15th or 16th year. Yeah, I was so, like that dude was wrestling when I yeah, was yeah exactly high school, and I've been out of high school for like nine years. Yeah, now. so like. Um, a lot of like the promos that get cut against him, kind of as kind of a fun or kind of like him trying to go be like an actor and like the Marine and um, <laughs> his movie with it was a movie with Amy Schumer again. I know we were just talking about it recently. Train wreck. Train wreck. Um, and then I guess he's in the Bumblebee movie, which I did not know yeah. until I until I. I just laughed because nobody believed that movie was coming out, and I kept telling everybody it's scheduled to come out, and they're like, "No, no, it's it looks like, adorable." I was like, as no, this hell. movie's scheduled to come yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think John Cena's in that. I think The Rock really does pave that way of like, if you're if you have at least enough charisma and enough acting chops, you can kind of go out there and kind of get those action roles. And maybe John Cena will kind of transition into those, um, you know, fatherly roles. But his problem is that he's like not a father and doesn't want to be. So I don't know if yeah. like he's going to be able to. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think that like you have to be a father. To yeah, I don't think you have to either. I don't think you have to either. But like, like, he's like. Notor- like the only knock against John Cena is like he's notorious for like being in, and this isn't really like a knock, but like he's like a super super hard worker. So it like ended his almost marriage and things like that yeah. because he just he just works so so much. Yeah. I so mean, I think I think he can do it. He can definitely do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure because I I loved him in Trainwreck. And yeah. what was the movie with the sisters when they have like the party in it? Is it like sisters? The one with uh, where they have like a house party? Oh, mm-hmm. uh, what is it? Oh. Uh- Block, uh, blockers. No, 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 no. Uh, that cop blockers movie. He's in that one. Is he? Yeah. I don't know which one you're talking about. Well, and I think I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Neighbors, which he does not play in that. No, it's. I think it's literally Sisters, the one with Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. Oh, that is called Sisters. I've never seen it. It's pretty funny, and John Cena plays it in that, and it, yeah. the role is hilarious. I, like, my, I was just saying, like, The Rock does well in showing that soft side in his, like, in, fa- in being a father yeah. in his roles, but also, like, taking on these, like, comedic roles that really, like, kind of, like, spit in the face of, like, what masculinity is supposed yeah. to be, especially yeah. in a man that size. And I don't think you have to necessarily do that as a father. And so yeah. I, think, I think John Cena can do that. It would just be different. And yeah, maybe not sure. as easy because there's not really a trope identified for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I, I guess that's what I mean. I don't think it'd be as easy as it is for The Rock to, to, to do. But I think he could definitely do it. Because, like, roles like Sisters, and if he's in Cock Blockers, he must be doing something funny. Did yeah, that uh, movie ever actually come out? It did. I heard it was hilarious, but then it, like, died because it happened during all the superhero movies, so nobody cared. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he could do it. But anyway, <laughs> As yeah. did all so the movies a, during that time. So that's a but why, though, right there, Kate. You just added one. The Rock paved the way for WWE people to go be movie stars. Yeah. Hopefully. That's why we have Drax. <laughs> um, so just real quick with his resume of kind of like why people think he's one of the greatest ever. Um, one of the youngest champions ever in the WWF. He was the first wrestler to win six title, uh, six championship titles with eight total when he kind of came back and had to use with John Cena. He won it a couple times. His 265 Intercontinental Champion reign was one of the longest in the modern era, lasting 24 years. He was one, He's one of the only wrestlers to ever hold two belts um, simultaneously. He held the championship belt and like a tag team belt at the same time multiple times. He holds the most um, main events for Raw and for SmackDown event, invented in one year, meaning he kind of ended the show's... Um, the most times out of anybody. He's tied for the most pay-per-view main events in one year. He's won multiple Slammies, which is WWE's version of the <laughs> Emmy slash Oscar. 
and he's through like the main wrestling magazine, the rest, uh, the Wrestling Observer. He's has multiple awards dating back to like the start of his career, and even like in the early and like when he came back for his feuds and stuff, he was still winning awards that way. So highly decorated um, in the th- amount of time that he did, and he's kind of like like we'll talk about here in the movies here in a second. He kind of injected like a new life into professional wrestling during the Attitude Era that more or less kind of kept it relevant up until kind of like the PG era where kids were old enough to understand what was going on. So definitely a very good spot in his career and one that I'm sure he's going to go back to um, every now and again to kind of get a nice little pop and maybe like a nice little paycheck over the years. Nice. And like we mentioned, this kind of got his foot in the door and now he's one of the biggest action stars slash movie stars. I wouldn't even say action stars anymore because he's in all these kind of different kind of comedic roles and stuff now. You're Um, welcome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, like we mentioned, he has over 100 acting credits on IMDb. Um, most notably, and this is obviously not in, in um, all-inclusive list, but The Scorpion King, The Rundown, Walking Tall, Gridiron Gang, Tooth Fairy, The Fast and the Furious franchise, Moana, his TV show Ballers, which is really good, and um, just an honorable mention, his SNL um, episode was one of, was very, very highly rated as well. So, does he have a movie that's actually any good rated wise Moana uh, besides like Moana which <laughs> he's just voice acting I thought Gridiron Gang was rated pretty good oh. I mean much as we say we enjoy some of these movies and whatnot, they're definitely they're, they're like act, they're flicks they're not movies yeah. they're flicks I think Gridiron Gang is the one that's like a real movie movie what year did Gridiron Gang came out your favorite movie you tell me <laughs> it I all mean, blurs together and this list has all of his wwe appearances so yeah. like there we go 2006 it's 2006 yeah jumanji has a seven seven out of ten i which think is like said i know bad. jumanji this has a 52 on metacritic <laughs> grand game is 6.9 out of 10 i forgot exhibit was in this movie okay <laughs> the best part of the movie right there pimp some rides uh, Doom, Doom is not not good on no, that list. No, people uh, hate, 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 hate <laughs> Doom. I don't know why. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'll, I'm just gonna check Fast Five real quick. Uh, Seven point three, and also made a whole bunch of money. Um, what was the race all... to which mountain? That one was a Disney movie. Um, it was a remake of a like seventies movie. So it's the one that has the meme. Would it rate it any good or not? Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't watch it. I just know it from the meme of like when he's like looking back in yeah, the backseat. I, I, I know it from the meme. That's about it. So I didn't know <laughs> if the movie was actually any good. I feel like this is what our entire future is going to be. I know it for the meme. <laughs> yeah, I'm not super sure. I do know that Ballers is pretty highly rated. Yes, on... I know Ballers has actually been pretty highly rated. Yeah, because Ballers is really, oh, really God. good. 5.7. Uh, We're just going to get out of that one. 42% <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. But 90% of Google users like this movie. Yeah, they're probably I, all five-year-olds and their parents when I'm using No, TV. like, I, so <laughs> I actually think Google users or user rating is probably the best because they're not going to deal with, like, the critic stuff. Yeah, I think Google rating is, like, the most, like, average Joe rating, which is why, like, it makes these movies make so much money despite their, you know, seven ratings and stuff like that on IMDb. Is there a particular movie that you're, that you're, can that you want to know if it was like rated highly, Matt? Yes. Is there a specific, specific one? Oh. That he plays in? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I that was I was asked if there was one besides maybe Jumanji, which I didn't know if that was rated highly, but I did, the only one I could see. I mean, 7 out of 10 is not bad. Walking Tall has an 88%. It has a 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a ter- It's not that great of a movie. Oh, gosh, guys, you want to know something? The rundown actually is apparently. I completely forgot that the I. I you I know, thought, it might I be thought, this movie that might be my favorite, and I not thought, Walking Tall. Yeah, I thought Walking Tall was the rundown, <laughs> and the rundown was Walking Tall. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, I'm like, posters. I think it's this one. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the poster. I'm like, I don't remember. I was like, yeah, yeah, Sean William Scott is in this one. This one's oh, really good. Yeah, so there was this movie and not Walking Tall that I thought. <laughs> they look. I think they. Okay, so the rundown came out in 2003. Wait, so which one do you guys like? Walking I'm, I'm Tall confused. came out in 2004. Oh, Kevin Sorbo's in that movie? Oh, gosh. Yeah, nope, no, it is. no, 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 oh, no, no. It's a completely different movie. Oh, gosh. What the fuck? So do you guys like the one with Sean William Scott or the other one? The one with Sean William Scott, which is apparently oh, the okay. rundown. Yeah. He got dad jeans. 
I don't. I but actually walking don't tall remember has, Walking Tall. The Walking Tall has uh, what's his face in it. Uh, a Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville. Well, it has Johnny Knoxville, but like the the, the villain guy in it is um, the villain from Arrow. Uh, oh, the Dark Damian Dark. Yeah, the Damian Dark. Sticks. Yeah. I don't remember Walking Tall. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I remember this movie because I remember Johnny Knoxville, and this was not the movie I was thinking of. Okay. It was so the Sean William Scott one. That yeah, one. That's, a, that's why I was surprised because usually that's, that's the way it goes, with which one people like more. But I was okay. like, hey, man. But like they it, literally are almost identical. They came out yeah. even, probably not even a year apart. Dude, look at those dad jeans. <laughs> those are bad. That is not intimidating. <laughs> those are bad. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're, we're going to stop this. <laughs> Come on, back on track. Here we go. All right. So kind of like on the same vein, I kind of tried to go back and I thought maybe he did. Because the, the theme of kind of go back to what we talked about earlier, like the theme of like professional wrestlers now, is they do like a whole bunch of like B and C movies and then maybe they kind of get like a big action role and like a big, big payday. But like The Rock is an anomaly where he took $5.5 million home in The Scorpion King and then like made money throughout his career. So, um, so was Scorpion King two thousand? What did I say? Two thousand two, two thousand one. Yeah, but he, I mean, much he took money, and he was coming into a franchise that was already highly popular and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Like people were going to show up to see that and were excited for yeah. the movie, no matter whether he was in it or not. Yeah, but they showed up because it was the Rock. Pretty sure they showed up because it was the third Mummy movie, or the side Mummy movie. Or yeah, whatever that's why mummy I showed movie. Up. I showed because of the rock. Now I show I... up for things because of the rock because that is a <laughs> glorious man right there. Yeah. So um, I didn't know how far back to go because he's kind of been in a lot of things like in the the 2010s. But in 2014, he was the second highest paid actor at 52 million. In 2015, he was the 11th highest paid actor at three point or 31.5 million. In 2016, he was the highest paid actor at 64.5 million, and last year he was the second highest paid actor at 65 million, making only less uh, three million less than Mark Wahlberg. Which I'm not sure how he how did Mark Wahlberg make that much money in 2017? What was he in? Yeah, I was trying to figure this out. I was like, what? Is that movies? all Wahlberger's money? Because that restaurant. It's all shit. Wahlberger's money. It's all Wahlberger's <laughs> money right there. He was in the random movie that people got mad at him for. Um. But anyway, it just kind of goes to show that, like, over at least, you know, the last um, four or five years, The Rock has been making a lot of money. A lot of that is because he's in the Fast and the Furious franchise. He's doing, you know, bigger movies like Jumanji. I don't think Baywatch made any money. No, um, it didn't. <laughs> uh, but movies like that. And then he has Ballers, which he's supposed to be taking home, like, I think, like, three figures for every episode, I think. So he's making quite a bit of money that way. And looking at three him, figures, so or like six or six figures. Sorry, I was thinking. I was thinking like three figures at work. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was thinking of like before the comma. Okay. Or, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So six figures. Yeah, six figures. Um, but, uh, for for every episode, and then like Math looking at hard. looking at what he was doing this year. Um, looking at Rampage made four hundred and seventeen million worldwide on a hundred twenty million dollar budget. I'm sure he got the lion's share in that movie since the movie is basically all him for the most part. Um he has Skyscraper c- coming out soon and Baller season four comes out in August. So I'm sure he's gonna make a lot of money. I don't know if he'll be at the top, but he's definitely gonna be in that top ten until, you know, some of these other roles come through. So some other roles that he's um rumored or confirmed to be in it's kind of really weird the way imd puts it it says rumored and then like he's confirmed for the movie but they don't know the, like what role he's in um but he's rumored to play black adam in the suicide squad 2 movie and also in shazam in shazam yeah and then big trouble in little china he's supposed Is to that have a, a remake role. yes i'm pretty uh, sure Kurt russell really yeah Really? Is, is he just going to take all the remakes from the 80s, he says? Yeah, he yeah. is. And he's, he's he right. is the remake of the no. 80s. He's I mean, going to do it right? I Don't mean, you Big ever Trouble talk about Kurt Russell like that. <laughs> How dare you disrespect Kurt Russell on this podcast? I have offended Matt. <laughs> yeah, how does it feel to have your, your heroes talk down upon Matt? Kurt Russell's old. With that amazing hair. <laughs> Matt, you just love Kurt Russell because you know you're going to look like him in like, 50, in like 20 years. I am totally fine with that. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, Hobbs and Shaw is supposed to be a spinoff from the Fast and Furious franchise. 
and then you have Jumanji 2, which I'm not surprised is getting made because Jumanji um, 1 is really good. It's supposed to but be like a different... you don't really need that, no. But it's supposed to be like a different different characters and stuff, so I assume this is going to be at some other time and like whatever. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, it, to be Stupid. honest with you. I don't Hollywood, know. you suck. <laughs> All I heard was spin-off, spin-off, another dumb sequel, and a remake. Either. Black Adams is on thing. Black Adams is on thing. I'm super excited. I don't even know what's going to happen with that. That whole universe could collapse here in about two months, or three, actually in about five months when Aquaman comes out. Oh, you know why they gave Zachary Levi that puffy suit? To match The Rock. (laughs) To match The Rock, yeah. I thought you were going to say Batman, but. Oh, well, yeah, but like, Rock doesn't need extra padding. Okay. Yeah. Um, So, in kind of like the way he kind of injects himself and. I saw, like, one article describe it as, like, he's, like, the Viagra of everything that he's in. <laughs> um, he basically saves the Fast and the Furious franchise with his role as Hobbs, and which is why he's probably going to get his own spinoff. Um, we can talk a little bit about his Tyrese beef. And his it's the drama, best thing in the damn world. <laughs> his drama awesome. is going to do. Tyrese hates Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like, he hates him. And The Rock hates him back. Like it's it's really weird. If you want to go like it when if you go he look at like a single ass. <laughs> yeah, if you go look at like their uh, their like Instagram posts about each other and stuff like that. Like Tyrese is really hurt that The Rock is basically taking over the franchise. And so yeah, is, Tyrese is broke and owes a lot of money to <laughs> a lot of people. And his wife hey, left man. him with his child. <laughs> hey Ty- Tyrese, he just he just wants to be John Stewart, man. Let him be. Oh no! And nobody no, wants him to be John Stewart no, anymore. No. <laughs> Um, and then he has like drama, drama with Vin Diesel. Do you think? You that, remember uh, Fast and the Furious two when they found him in that trailer park working? That's probably Tyrese's <laughs> actual life now. <laughs> he I'm just sure, released a single. Leave him I'm, alone. I'm sure. I'm sure he's making plenty of money. I think. I think he's all right. <laughs> um, and then he has drama with Vin, with Vin Diesel, as we mentioned before, because he thinks Vin Diesel thinks that he's like breaking the family and kind of like the reason why he's doing this franchise, which he's not completely wrong about. Like Tyrese's thing is a lot has a lot less like ground to it like Vin Diesel's problem with um The Rock is definitely more um relevant and kind of like grounded in reality in my opinion Tyrese <laughs> is just like nuts um <laughs> uh, and like on the get added by like Tyrese stands can Ty oh I thought you were gonna say Tyrese like if Tyrese adds oh, us God. I am down because I I'll love his- Tyrese because <laughs> Because I'll be completely honest, people don't like Tyrese's role in the Fast and Furious franchise. I love Tyrese's. I love his comedy relief in. I the liked movies. it at first, his, but his, now his now interactions kind of a, with Ludacris, like I'm all about it. I just like Ludacris shitting on him the whole time. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. at first he was good, like in the second movie and stuff. Now he's just been replaced by a, a pro wrestler and a rapper. <laughs> yeah, and Jason yeah. Statham. And Jason Statham. <laughs> but so like 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 we're talking about like for like Black Adam. Um, I want so bad for like The Rock to do something and revitalize something in that universe. And if it's with Black Adam, I, I hope I hope it is. Does um, that mean we're gonna all be rooting for the villains in this thing? I think so because Zachary Levi is like a shit. I guess yeah. Zachary Levi is not a nice man. <laughs> I'll rephrase and, that so I can leave it in. I don't like the I'm going there for Rock. What Although is, I would love him to play Lobo. Lobo would be good. Great Lobo. Just about anything you put The Rock in, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with. The Rock is a ball of joy, and I love him. He's a ball of joy, and I don't know like where his ceiling is for like his acting. Uh, cause I think he really does have under underestimated range, because if you look at him in like The Great Iron Gang, The Tooth Fairy, Central Intelligence, and then all of his action roles, like he has pretty good range, and I think he can do lots of really great things and he's a big box office draw so i'm not sure where he's going and he's also aging backwards like we said so like the dude's 46 47 and he looks like he's not so so if, so if skyscrapers yeah, if skyscrapers bombs does it hurt him or not i don't think it hurts him because he also has ballers coming out and i he think made as, so much money off of rampage yeah but rampage yeah. was also like not uh was not that great. But he made a lot of money. Well, he he's obviously going hey, to make I, all the money, but the question is how I big like of a draw are you going to be if all your movies end up being... I mean, there are like 10 Fast and the Furious movies that nobody likes in the States, but like make so much money overseas. Yeah, like Hobbs and Shaw will get a big draw. I'm sure Jumanji 2 will, will do well again. 
Um, I think people will show up just to see him as Black Adam. I know I will, even yeah. though I'm not a huge fan of like the DCEU at the moment. But I'll show up for him, and I think that's what people are expecting. And I think as long as Ballers is going on, I think he's going to stay relevant, at least in like the TV realm, too. So Yeah. And do more things with Kevin Hart. Yeah, do more stuff with oh, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Oh, Kevin Hart's in hiding. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Um, from Kevin Hart and Zachary Levi, we'll talk about why... <laughs> The Rock is a good person outside of his roles. Uh, so he uses his celebrity for good, and he's like one of those guys kind of that you don't really hear anything bad about him unless you're Tyrese um, because he does a lot of great work. So we'll kind of go through some of his stuff and then get into some fun facts and then get through our fine but why those because we are running slightly longer. Um, so we'll start off like with his charity work so he if you like any kind of like big name actor especially ones who are who've been du- who do the WWE stuff they're super big into charity and the rock is no different so they he's worked with he's worked with um, raised money for donated to charities like make a wish um, starlight children's foundation i have a dream foundation um, multiple hurricane relief efforts especially since he has like those ties to florida um, the florida area so Lots of stuff and many, many more. Um, and then out, outside of like um, other organizations, he actually created his own foundation, the Dwayne Johnson um, Rock Foundation. So and he founded this in 2006, and they do a lot of work with terminally ill children to the age of 22, kind of like making their dreams come true and things like that. Kind of like a make a wish, but he also does a lot of work with troubled youth and kind of like rehabilitation stuff like that. Because as we know, he had kind of a similar upbringing. Um, not upbringing, but a similar uh, path in his life. So he yeah. does a lot of work through that foundation so with like his really, own work. Which is, like, really breaking that, like, that pipeline of, like, juvenile, you yeah. know, kid, if juvenile, you know, I don't want to say criminals because a lot of them have different reasons for doing what they do, but, like, yeah. the ju- uh, juvenile offenses to, like, big-time prisons, and it's, like, it's really good that he's doing that work because somebody needs to. Yeah, and he kind of moving on from that, he kind of uses his platforms really well, too. So he's super big on Instagram. He runs his own Instagram kind of in the way that, like, like Will Smith and stuff does. So he <laughs> talks a lot with, like, I only use Will Smith because he's, like, one of the only celebrities I follow on Instagram. You and, actually like, still and, use Instagram at this point? I mean, I scroll through it to watch Will Smith and The Rock talk about stuff. Uh, because he's there. Well, The Rock specifically is always like visiting fans. He's always, you know, talking, you know, good messages and things like that. You know, promoting because like all this stuff that happens on social media that we've been going through in the last like ye- like year and a half. Like, yeah. it's good to see The Rock talking about stuff and you know, and especially for the next point of like him more recently talking about kind of like his battles with like depression and stuff like that. It's good stuff to see on a timeline when all this other like craziness is going on him dressing up as pikachu for his daughter is adorable yeah and it's one of the best videos on the internet he really really loves his daughters (laughs) like it'd be weird if he didn't though yeah it would be i mean you'd be surprised at all these people who don't like their kids who are celebrities drake (laughs) Uh, was that called for sir (laughs) (laughs) He's, we got we to gotta stay relevant. We got to talk about the relevant <laughs> stuff. Um, so kind of, and one of like the biggest reasons why I think he's using kind of his celebrity for good is he's using his platform to like talk about real issues like depression, which does like a whole lot of things. So we'll talk a bit, like real quick about, so for The Rock, he's been pretty vocal about his battle with depression for a very, very long time. Um, and a lot of it stems from kind of the hardships that he went through when he was um, younger. So at 15, The Rock watched his mom attempt suicide by walking into oncoming traffic after they were evicted from their apartment. Yeah. He pulled her from the highway, but it would start like it would spark depression, you know, of him going through this with, you know, his mom and his mom battling depression as well. Um, it would continue on after his football career ended and a bad breakup with his girlfriend. He said it was the lowest point of his life. He said that... Um, he said he reached a point where he didn't want to do anything or go anywhere, he, and he cried constantly. Um, so very, very open about like that situation and kind of getting out of that place. And over like the last few years, he's been pretty vocal about this situation in general with through interviews, through his use of social media, and things like that. So um, a tweet that he had like not too long ago, or like a interview that he did not too long ago and a tweet he did not too long ago was uh depression never discriminates took me a long time to realize but the key is 
not to be afraid to open up, especially as dudes have a tendency to keep it in. You're not alone, which for the rock, who's kind of like your prototypical, if you just look at him at like walking down the street, he's your proto- prototypical macho man. He's wears suits all the time. He's six, five. He's huge. Has lots of swagger. The women love him. Like he has all of the, all the check boxes to make him kind of like this prototypical macho man. But like Kate said, he has these roles in these movies, and more importantly, he's not afraid to open up about kind of like how he's feeling, which um, isn't always the easiest thing when you're when you're a dude. So it's yeah. super super good work that he's doing yeah. to be able to talk about that to use his platform of millions and millions of followers to to talk about these things. Yeah, openly. he's like yeah, he's really dismantling like that toxic ma- masculinity like framework of like you have to be just this one thing and you can't cry and you can't make people like it like he's i don't know like i I was reading a whole bunch about it and then like listening to you talk about it like it's just really good and it just it kind of reminds me of like the work i guess that like stack up's doing like the depression never discriminates line you know like a lot of these guys get back from uh you know from overseas and stuff and they're in a position where they're the protectors of people they're you know they're they're held up to this like standard and then they don't know how to kind of speak about you know stuff that they're dealing with because like so much tells them that they shouldn't be dealing with it or there's so many stigmas so like to know that there are you know men out there and and, you know in the rock like kind of like stepping up and being like yo all of this happens it's normal it's okay like that's it's really powerful yeah, it's super helpful because he, he normalizes it. And not to say that, you know, women don't go through depression because they definitely yeah, do. They just, but to talk about it, things. Yeah, exactly. But the way that he, he talks about it specifically to guys is super great, especially yeah. for, you know, someone like me who I would like to think that I'm, you know, pretty masculine guy. You know, I work out and stuff and <laughs> I got a mustache. Um, and I bottle stuff up all the time. I hate talking about my feelings. And yeah. I'm going through like one of the most stressful points in my entire life right now. And it sucks. Um, but like kind of going through this and doing the notes and stuff like that. And as stupid as it sounds, and I I don't want to say as stupid as it sounds, but like kind of as trivial as it may seem, like listening to him and his like his clips and stuff like that, which we'll, which I think we should put in the show notes just yeah. um, to have it in there. Just to hear him say this is is really comforting, especially like me. I mean, I'm not six five and two fifty. No, but um, you're a dude, and like you all are yeah. always told not to cry, or like yeah. that you have to be strong for other people, and that's that's not healthy. Yeah. Yeah, before I start opening up and crying on the podcast, because I'm... Um, but that's what kind of all I got about The Rock. I mean, it's not... Like I said, like he's not like Tolkien, obviously. Like That's like, a whole other like, level of impact over like generations of impact. Um, but The Rock himself, you know, past this kind of like big, macho, you know, big buff guy, he's doing a lot of great work. He's... Every avenue that he's in, he puts 110% in. He's a great dad. He's an um, amazing performer in professional wrestling. He's... I think a pretty decent actor um, who makes fun movies that I go see, you know, almost every year and his using his platform to talk about these things is super, super important, um, which is why I think his episode is kind of really important to do. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I got. Any final thoughts before I do some fun facts? Uh, I guess like my final thought is... Um, I keep thinking about the Under Armour, I think it's Under Armour commercial that he just did, where he's just, like, narrating, like, how people fail, and how you get up, and you you persevere through it, and you go through it, and, like, I know you said, like, John Cena's a notoriously hard worker, but I think, like, The Rock, given all of this stuff, is also a notoriously hard worker, because of everything, like, he's been in the place where he's had nothing, and so he puts it all in, all of the time. And, like, that type of mentality, like, I can under, like, it wears on you. And so, like, I think it's great that he's really open about that wear and tear. Um, And I don't know. I just respect him. Like, that's, like, he literally came from nothing. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess his father, like, was able to get him into the, you know, the WWE and stuff. But, like, the, yeah, he worked his way up. And, like, at least from what I can see, has not stopped working. So... I respect him a lot. Uh, and he's Matt? not reinforcing toxic masculinity, which is awesome. Not at all. It's really great. Matt? Yeah. I mean, obviously, he did a lot for the uh, for his times between wrestling and definitely pop culture, because obviously, he, anybody, if you ask anybody around, they're going to know who he is and what he does. 
Yeah. And they're going to know his fanny pack and everything else. <laughs> it's one of the best pictures of all time. I it love is. I want it framed in my house. <laughs> like a giant one right above your yep. mantle. No, right next to my stairs. <laughs> yeah. But now that I was rudely interrupted here again. <laughs> uh, as far as I think, I mean, I'm sure he's still going to be in a lot of movies. I wish some of those movies would be a little better. Some of them been a little. You're just ma- you're just magazines in big trouble, little China. Well, one that movie should not be made again. <laughs> so yes, but uh, two, I was actually still disappointed he got Black Adam, the Black Adam role though. Yeah, I think he deserves something bigger. No, I mean not necessarily something bigger. I was just hoping he wouldn't have to, because basically you know he's probably gonna have to die. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not wrong. Or put this way, you're gonna know he's gonna lose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh. No, I think just between I me mean, enjoy some of his movies and do whatever, I just think some of them of late have been more of like, we're just going to throw you in here and throw some cookie cutter script together. Yeah. Yeah. But no, he definitely... I lost a train of thought on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You started thinking about his abs? Is yeah, that what happened? Know. I've <laughs> tried to contain the thirst this entire episode. <laughs> Yeah, it's there. <laughs> no, but I mean, the movies and everything else aside, especially because obviously he's very active on all social media and does a very good job with that, as we've talked about, though. Especially yeah. compared to some of the other people that have been name-dropped in this episode. Yeah. No, I just think he's genuinely a good dude. Also, yeah. thank you, Adrian, for opening up and like letting me know like how that like affects you as a dude. Because that, that means a lot, and I understand. Hey, thanks. Love you, Kate. Uh, now, the fun facts... So I can bottle my emotions again. <laughs> uh, so, like, like I mentioned, so this kind of whole episode is kind of like one big fun fact if you don't really know too much about The Rock. So I just kind of pulled ones that didn't really fit in anywhere um, or, like, I couldn't, like, kind of work in. So the first one that we talked about earlier, SmackDown is officially part of the dictionary, and I think that's largely in part to, you know, him laying the SmackDown on people for, you know, like 15 years. Um so if you play Scrabble, you can actually play the word SmackDown in it. Um, he also co-wrote his autobiography, The Rock Says in 2000, and it stays as one of the be- and it's stayed as one of the best sellers in the New York Times bestsellers list for several weeks. So he had a number one book Damn. for a long time. Uh, so he also writes stuff, and he's yeah. He probably um, just sat there in a chair. Yeah, I was like, he co-writes stuff. Tea. Yeah, he just like sat there in his fanny pack. Yep. And just di- dictated, took, not read. Took out his chapstick from it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought it was a really cool story. Um, I don't know if you all saw it, but back in 2012, he surprised his mom with a brand new Cadillac for Christmas. And he shared, like, kind of going back to that story when he was younger. And in the Instagram post, he said, at 17 or at 14, I saw my mom cry about our only car being repossessed. This felt good. Merry Christmas, Mom. So he's a mama's boy, which is you know, beautiful. He's able to give his mom that car after all that time of all the hardships that she went through, which I think is really nice. Um, on a different note, in on May 21st, 2015, he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most selfies within three minutes. <laughs> During the premiere of San Andreas, he took 105 selfies with fans. And this is why nobody oh, cares about the Guinness Book of World Records anymore, <laughs> which I used to read every single year when I was a kid and look at all the fun statistics. But I now we have surprised. dumb shit like this <laughs> and why I can't take you seriously anymore and why you have idiots who jump on pogo sticks or take selfies or do eat 25 or smash their head into bottles or something. Because I can be in the Guinness Book of World Records for something that nobody ever want to do or gives a shit about. I feel this like- episode this episode really hurt Matt and I have no <laughs> idea how that happened. <laughs> I used to love the Guinness Book of World Records. This was I not the episode that I thought would do this. <laughs> the Guinness Book of World Records now. That, and they made them all fancy little pictures and they took away all the numbers out of it. <laughs> Matt is going through some serious struggles right now. I love you, now. Matt. <laughs> Terrible. Do you need help, Matt? Do you need a hug? No. If you, maybe if you hug me 25 times in the next 35 seconds, we can get in the Guinness Book of World Records. We record. can try. Call, no. call, call, Leia, call Leia over here. <laughs> the fact that some, people call and submit hug. these are terrible. <laughs> anyway. And they allow this. We actually had a Matt lot of fan, but why grumpy, those? I'm sorry. Matt is like the best grumpy old man. <laughs> and he's not, he's not even old yet. And he's already <laughs> grumpy. Okay. Um, 
So we actually had a lot of fan but why those for this episode, which I did not think was going to happen. Um, so we're going to go through go through them. And again, if I mispronounce your Twitter handle, I'm sorry. I'm terrible at it. Uh, so we'll start with pilots and purds. No. Pilots and petards. And, oh, petards. Uh, See, yeah. I thought it was I thought it was petards, but I was like, do I want to say petards? Yeah, like, so they actually do an intro on their show where they explain petard is actually a military term, and it has to be oh, like hoisting gotcha. something up and, like, blowing it up. And so they, like, review pilots, like, pilot episodes of, movie, of uh, TV shows, and then, like, see if it, like, still lands and stuff like that, and they either... Uh, like hoist it, 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 it's like a whole thing. They like have a thing in the beginning that says it's not a derogatory term. Gotcha. <laughs> He's one of our lovely bloggers. Yeah, Why we knew all this. He is. Uh, gotcha, Drew gotcha. writes for us, and you can check out his Get Off My Lawn articles where he like reviews movies from the pre MCU age. Yes. Yeah. So at Pilots and Petards, um, dude, because The Rock is effing. Hashtag masculinity goals and the atti- and attitude era WWF is the best WWF double exclamation marks. Hashtag it doesn't matter what your name is. The Rock destroyed badass Billy Gunn's career like a stone cold assassin. Juan, can we start referring to hashtag as the you know number sign or the I knew pound he was gonna sign? Do this. I knew like he was going to do this. To be that but it was on the other day. It was on Twitter. Like of course it's, it's a, a hashtag. hashtag Matt. It's Twitter. Matt, put old man away <laughs> and just enjoy the episode. See, put put old man Matt away. All the things put old do. man Matt Hash, away. Hashtag put old man Matt away. Yep. <laughs> Putting it on a shirt. Yeah, that, that's a good one. <laughs> um, at Evan of Nabu. Yeah. Uh, being transparent about his mental health, which is what we talked about, which I think is a great fan, but why though? Um, always with a fan, but why those at Darth Nicola are Nicole. Nicole. It's, I always read it as Nicola. I know it's like Nico, but I always just read it as Nicola. I don't know. Because there's that, that, that UH makes like it up. Nicola. Uh. Nicola. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, our always, always great patron friend of the podcast. He's a family man, wrestling icon, and an amazing actor. The movie, the game plan, was one of my favorite films. I'm so Matt, sorry, Nico. Matt, <laughs> see what you do, Matt. He's also he's also been in the Spy Hunter games that came out in the early 2000s. The man does it all. The man has done it all. Plus, his Instagram game is strong AF. Hashtag, do you smell what the rock is cooking? Pound. <laughs> Matt, it's not, no. Put him away. At the liberal chief, because of his openness also about. Also one of our patrons. Also one of our patrons. Yep. This is Brad. Also one of our patrons, Brad. Because of his openness about failure and overcoming adversity, his dream was to be in the NFL. That never happened, and he said it was the best thing that, that never happened to him. Now he's one of the most successful out- actors out there. So, yeah, kind of as we talked about how he was going to go do it, and then he, his dad said, no, don't do it, and he did it anyway, and now, now we're here. Now he makes $65 million a year acting. Mm-hmm. At Flix X-Raid... At the Rock is one of the most inspiring, <laughs> <laughs> is one of the most inspiring people, and his positive go-getter attitude makes the world a better place. He's the perfect example of how I hope to be as a person. We need more people of inspiration like him. Completely agree. At Trish makes also one of our bloggers. Yep, I think he challenges the physical stereotype of macho manly with humor, specifically. It, I think the idea of being manly made men scared of being funny. I am funny AF, first of all. Hashtag <laughs> funny AF. Uh, no, but I think you're completely right in something that we talked about in the podcast for sure. This one I'm not really sure how to pronounce. Uh, uh, X-Fate. He's been a great entertaining man since his WWE days. And that is a shot, one of our bloggers as well. Our bloggers showed up for some family white Yeah. <laughs> At Antics of Anthony, I don't think this is wise, dot, 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 because you'd have to dedicate your podcast episodes from here on out to him and still wouldn't be enough to cover his awesomeness and why he matters. Um, At Lady Bitch Time, uh, simply based off the fact a man as built and as tough as him embraces the characters considered nerdy, uncool, insecure, and those who aren't considered heroes, his passion to grasp all sides and not shy away. And then she posted one of the, uh, the gifts of like him slapping his butt like in a turtleneck um, <laughs> for this one specifically. 
And then we also ran a poll of your favorite um, role that The Rock did, kind of marrying our question at the beginning of the episode. And we got some votes, um, 31% The Rock from Pro Wrestling, 31% for Maui from Moana, 25% for Hobbs and Fast and the Furious, and 13% from Porter and the Gridiron Gang. I'm very disappointed in the people who voted for this because they didn't vote Porter higher. Um, yeah, we got some comments. Moana. Yeah. And we voted for some some com some comments in that thread. One from at Real Comics. The chances he took with with films like Game Plan and Tooth Fairy showed he was more than just a muscular bound a muscle bound action star. And I also thought the hosting and SNL hosting gig opened a lot of eyes. Those and f- are terrible. <laughs> Matt, stop! Put the old man away. <laughs> Not even old man. Those are just bad Matt, movies. No. Um, and then at Game Boys. Uh, co-op which is the Game Boys podcast his role on Ballers is great and I've always loved the rundown my favorite is Hobbs but honestly I can't think of a movie of his that I haven't seen or that I've seen and didn't enjoy and then he put in the gifts of dad's gotta go to work when he flexes out of the cast and then picks up a machine gun and shoots down a helicopter um, and then you wonder why <laughs> then at CJ writes things I loved him in Walking Tall Smiley Face we got so much love for The Rock, guys. I'm happy yeah, we did so this much episode. love. Yeah, me too. I'm glad it won the poll. You don't go see, back. go see skyscrapers. Yeah, you're right. I wanted to do Vin Diesel, but <laughs> I also like The Rock, so it's it's okay. We will not be seeing skyscrapers. We're I'm gonna sorry. go see skyscrapers. We are not seeing skyscrapers. It looks it's, good, and I no, love it. Doesn't. It's, it looks better than the last four Die Adrian, Hards. Adrian, so. will you all mo- will you all take me to the movies with you guys? For sure. Let's do it. See, this is this is the joy of having them in the same city now. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. But yeah, that's all I got. Do you smell what? But why though the podcast is cooking? Rock episodes. <laughs> okay, so as always, you can find the podcast at But Why Though PC on Twitter and Facebook, facebook.com slash But Why Though PC. Make sure you check us out on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash But Why Though PC. We're pretty much But Why Though PC for everything. Just like put it in a search bar. We're probably there. Um, and. Please, please, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you listen to us. It helps other people find us, and we definitely want to hear your feedback. Uh, you can find me at Oh My Myth Randier on Twitter. Adrian? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at SuperReese93, S U P E R R U I Z 93. Matt? I'm lost in Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> That's Perfect. Good. Perfect. You should have said lost in big trouble, but lost in little China.